So, and this is about the, the, the Vampire 4 standalone machine. And I, uh, before I start, I must say that I'm, that this is my first Amiga-ish computer. I'm fully aware that that is not a real Amiga machine, but it's uh, for me, for someone who comes from the, uh, from, uh, yeah, other worlds like Unix, Linux, and um, uh, I've, I've toyed a little bit with the Atari um, ST machines, but not so much. Um, for me, this is really uh, in, in the area of Amiga. And I would like to give you my first impression on, on this new machine um, from, yeah, maybe my view as someone coming not from the Amiga community, but more from the outside world and having a, a development focus or developer focus on this. So my, my goal with these machines is not playing games. So what is the Vampire 4 standalone? It's, it's a new Amiga-ish computer from Apollo Accelerators, and it has a 68080 CPU, um, which is a, a custom design CPU made by the people from Apollo Accelerators, and it's in an FPGA. And the, the numbers here are coming directly from their website. I'm trying to get someone from the Apollo team to join this chat and talk about um, um, the um, the CPU and uh, what's in there and, and how they decided to uh, come up with the design of the CPU. And um, yeah, hopefully next year we will have a chat on this exclusively. Um, but they say it's equivalent to a roughly uh, one gigahertz 68 or 30 uh, machine. It comes with a half of gig of DDR3 RAM and it has an um, expanded super AGA graphics uh, system which can uh, do higher resolutions and uh, up to 32-bit uh, 32 uh, per pixel. So this is actually my setup here, um, where you see the, the small box with the, uh, the vampire sticker on there. That's actually the machine. Um, below there, that's just a normal Intel Linux machine that I use for work. Um, but that's currently not powered on. It's uh, the um, Vampire 4 that uh, you see there. And then I have a, a keyboard and a mouse attached to that. Oh, another shot, how that looks like. So what's in there? Uh, it has an IDE slot and the IDE slot has this uh, compact flash card. There's also an SD card slot um, where you can um, use that to exchange data with other machines. It has HDMI video and audio. So um, the audio can also go through HDMI through the loudspeakers of your um, um, uh, monitor setup. It has Ethernet, 100 megabit Ethernet. It has a USB at the, um, ports, three of them. And uh, I go a little bit deeper in there. Um, there are some particularities about that, but you can have keyboard, mouse, joystick, joypads attached to that. There are also two DB9 style Amiga joystick ports. Uh, they currently don't support any Amiga or Atari mouse systems there, but that might come in the future. And you get power via mini B USB port. Uh, it draws a roughly two amps, uh, uh, five volts of uh, USB power. Um, the main operating system is called Apollo OS, which is a customized uh, ours, customized uh, where ours is the ours research operating system. It's an open source um, API and ABI compatible system that is compatible with the, or mostly compatible with the classic 68K Amiga OS. Um, but you can also run some other more modern Amiga OSs, the, the, the quote original Amiga OSs. Uh, you can run Emotos uh, from Atari ST and you can run Mint, uh, which runs on top of Emotos, which is a multitasking Unix-ish um, operating system for the Atari ST series. So the, the Vampire 4 can be very picky. I found that out on the first day when I um, put that onto 
uh, my desk. Uh, first, the, the power supply. You should really use the one that comes with the machine um, because that's been tested. Um, if you use some other stuff, maybe from um, a mobile phone or something, it might work or it might to pretend to work and then it might fail when you start compiling stuff or really putting the machine to test. Um, the keyboard, I had to test multiple keyboards until I found one. Uh, it's, it's especially important that the keyboard doesn't have a built-in uh, USB hub because that wouldn't work because the Vampire currently doesn't support USB hubs. All the USB devices need to be directly attached. Now I'm using a Vortex Tab 75 that you have seen. It's not my preferred uh, mechanical keyboard, but it's just one that works on the machine. And mouse, I also had to test multiple mouses. Uh, luckily, I have a zoo of uh, old and new USB mouses, and I had luck with the Lenovo USB mouse working there. Um, the USB ports are dedicated. The keyboard must be in the rear USB port. It doesn't work in any of the other USB ports. And the mouse must be on the lower front USB port. Also, it wouldn't work on the rear. It wouldn't work on the upper front USB port. Um, that really can give you a headache if you don't read the instructions there. Um, HDMI just works fine, even with my widescreen LG monitor that I have there. It doesn't use the full resolution that the screen is, is capable of, but it looks much better than most Linux distributions uh, come up with on this uh, screen. Usually with other operating systems, I had to uh, tinker quite some time uh, to, to get it working somehow reliably and, and looking nice. Um, that was quite good with the Vampire. It just worked out of the box with uh, a good scale. So my first impression here, it's quite nice. It's a pre-packaged and pre-configured system. It's mostly plug and play. Uh, if you read the instruction about the USB stuff. Uh, the networking was disabled, uh, but enabling it, that was uh, quite easy. You go in some configuration panel and then you click on uh, start networking on, on boot up time. And there's a lot of what I call batteries included. Uh, there's tools and applications like web browsers, games, demos, and development stuff in there. So here's a screenshot of uh, two browsers. One is AWeb on the left side, the other one is iBrowse on the um, right side. Uh, both are included. iBrowse is the, um, the, the demo version that runs 30 minutes and uh, then you have to shut it down or you can buy a license for that. The both works just, just fine. So development tools. Uh, there is GCC as part of the Amiga development environment, uh, which is the old geek gadgets. Um, it is a Unix-like environment for the Amiga OS, and it, to my understanding, it translates the syscalls, um, the, the Unix syscalls um, into the Amiga Aros Apollo OS syscalls, and it emulates, um, very similar to Wine, uh, a Unix environment in on, on an Amiga operating system. It comes with a quite dated uh, GCC, GCC 2.95.3, and it has the M68K bin utils in there, and it has a couple of common project tools like the corn shell, uh, org, Perl set, and so on. But everything is quite dated, so compiling modern software uh, is probably a challenge. But at least it's there. There's also the, um, the VBCC and C compiler in there, which is more modern than the GCC, and it supports uh, more interesting targets like uh, Morph OS and the Ataris. Um, and it comes also with the VLink and VAssembler, um, and that makes a nice package of um, starting the C uh, development on, on that system. Then there's a couple of assemblers. There's the ASM1 assembler, uh, that targets M68K and PowerPC. There's a dev pack and there's a VASM. And there's three basics uh, in there uh, with Amos Pro, Amiga Blitz, and Pure Basic. Um, I'm, I'm not a basic developer, so I just briefly looked at them and uh, didn't do much there. 
Um, I'm just doing a screenshot. Here's the Amos Pro um, system. Um, editors, uh, there's of course Vim in the, the MUI variant. And uh, the, the author of Vim is, uh, is, an, is coming from the Amiga um, community and he still, main, still maintains Vim uh, for the Amiga and, and this is really nice. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not a VI or Vim uh, person, I'm an Emacs person. So uh, um, I, I struggle to find a, an Emacs uh, there. Um, I've read that the, the old Amiga OS had micro Emacs uh, as part of the system. Um, this system, the Apollo OS, doesn't have, or at least I couldn't find it there. Uh, there are other, other editors, um, GUI editors like Annotate, R-Edit, and the Amiga OS default editor, Ed. Uh, all that are not really my liking because I, I need Emacs. Really, I need it. Um, here's a screenshot of Vim. Yeah, like Vim is really um, great if you if you know how to to wrangle that. <clears throat> so other development tools, there's Free Pascal, uh, prepackaged the the latest version 3.0, no 3.2.0. Uh, there's Lua, um, also a, a Amiga um, um, customized version Ami Lua that uh, can do GUI stuff. There's the MUI Builder, which is an interface builder for, for MUI um, GUI uh, parts. And there's a Rex, of course. And that gave, gave me a blast of the past because I, uh, I did uh, quite a lot of OS2 in the 1990s and did Rex programming there. And it's nice to see that language. I still still has a special place in my heart, even though I don't do, do too much uh, Rex programming these days. Uh, so here's uh, Free Pascal. And I plan to do uh, some stuff with P3 Pascal on, on the Vampire in the future. And maybe I will um, uh, tell you about that in some of the future chats. Uh, here's a screenshot of the MUI builder, how that looks like. And this is the, the Lua stuff uh, with still Free Pascal floating in the background. So the blue stuff is that Free Pascal at the front, it's uh, the Lua stuff showing a function plotter written in Lua. Uh, there's a couple of emulators. There's PC Task 4, which is the PC slash MS-DOS emulator. There's an MSX, a Stella for the Atari 2600, a MAME, GNGO, and ScumVM for those who want to play uh, Monkey Island. Uh, there's even Monkey Island shipped on the CF card, which is nice. This is a screenshot of the setting of uh, the PC emulator, uh, PC task, where you uh, uh, define a hard disk images and how much memory, and then it, it starts up and it's quite usable because the, the vampire is fast and uh, fast enough to give you a roughly a Pentium 1 um, emulated PC on the machine. So of course I, I run into a few issues. Uh, <coughs> The first one was a funny one, but quite annoying. When using the, <coughs> sorry, the make utility from the Amiga development environment, it, it shuts down the machine. So it compiles the first C code file, and then it shuts down the machine and you get the message, please uh, power off the machine. <laughs> and, and then you start up, you call make again, it compiles the next C file, and then it shuts down the machine again. Uh, so very annoying. I downloaded um, a different make port from Aminet and that worked. I also uh, mentioned that on the forums, on the uh, uh, vampire uh, knowledge base forums, I got the hint to increase the stack. Um, um, I did that, but that didn't change anything. So I have to dig deeper what's really going on there. Why it does make uh, shut down the machine? At least I have no command to shut down the machine from the command line. Um, then there were some GCC instabilities. So with the other make tool, I was able to compile. But roughly after two or three source files compiled, uh, the GCC <coughs> process crashes with uh, a problem in uh, in the vfork system call with an illegal stack frame. So that 
is possibly either an ARUS or the IX emul, which is the Unix emulation shim or a GCC issue. Um, my current workaround is I, I suspend the crashed uh, task and then I restart make in another shell process and continue and usually after three or four tries it compiles everything. Uh, still not great. And then there, there was the free Pascal date issue that is now um, solved thanks to Charlie who is also on the call. He helped me today with uh, uh, figuring out what's going on here. Uh, with free Pascal compiling even simple programs like Hello World uh, stopped with an error that the 1980 is not a valid date specification. And uh, Charlie found out that this is because um, on my machine in the pre packaged CF card, uh, all the files of uh, Free Pascal and a lot of other files that were pre installed had a date stamp of uh, 1st January 1978, which is the start of the epoch of the Amiga OS. So that is the, the lowest date that you can have in an Amiga OS, to my understanding. And Free Pascal, for some compatibility reasons with uh, old MS-DOS code, uh, possibly some Turbo Pascal stuff uh, from back in the days, uh, only allowed dates starting from the 1st of uh, January 1980, so two years later. So, and when Free Pascal saw a date such old, uh, before 1980, it uh, calculated the dates of 00, 0 and that was not a valid date specification of sure. Of course, it's not. Um, the um, workaround here was to uh, uh, change all the date stamps on the free Pascal files to some date uh, after 1980, and, and that worked just fine. And uh, Charlie will uh, fix that in the free Pascal code that that doesn't happen again. And I will contact the Apollo people uh, to, um, um, yeah, be maybe a little bit more careful in the prepackaged systems to um, have the the clock set before uh, installing the the software on the card. So what's missing? I'm a big IPv6 guy, and IPv6 networking is missing. Not really complaining here. Uh, a lot of older systems like. Uh, uh, other system, yeah, other like Mint or so don't have IPv6. Uh, even though for for these systems, IPv6 would be really fine because an IPv6 stack is quite more simple than IPv4. Uh, and uh, yeah, we should tackle that at some point of time. And I'm happy to help with that. Um, there's no real time clock, so you have to set the clock um, every startup. Uh, you can do that through the network if uh, your vampire is networked. Um, so it's not a big deal, and you can buy uh, a clock module for roughly three or euros on eBay uh, that you can then add to the I2C uh, uh, bus um, on the machine, and then you have an, a real-time clock. Um, given the, the price tag of the Vampire of roughly 600 euro, um, maybe it would be a good idea to have that real-time clock um, pre-packaged in there, or maybe as a um, as an as an option for people uh, ordering. Yeah, a more stable GCC environment would be nice. Uh, I missed my Emacs, some sort of, it could be a micro Emacs. I don't need the full-blown uh, Emacs, uh, but some kind, some stuff that reacts to, to Emacs uh, key codes would be nice. Um, Modular 2, Oberon, um, yeah, I was missing that. I understand that at least Modular 2 was popular on Amiga back in the days. And of course, the fourth, that's uh, something that I will change, of course. But my final thoughts after using the system uh, uh, roughly for a week, it's a really great system, a lot of fun working with that. Uh, it's it's fast, fast enough for, for most tasks. It has some teething issues, uh, but so far the team and the community are responsive and are helpful. So that's that's great, and uh, I'm really looking forward to do more stuff with that system.